Yeah. Um, so I'm glad to be back home. I'm glad to be here. Um, I just had a post not long ago talking about how excited I am to be here on my Instagram. But um, I think that, you know, football has been amazing for me throughout my whole career. The, the, the places and the cities that it's taken me to, um, you know, up here in Canada, across the country, as well as in the U.S. But um, I think this is going to be unique. Um, the fact that I'll be able to, uh, you know, finish games, finish practices and come back to my girls and, and my wife um, on a daily basis. Um, like I said, it's going to be unique and special to me. So um, I'm excited um, and uh, I, can't make, I can't wait to meet the guys and, uh, uh, you know, take on and tackle on this new season. Awesome. We love it. Uh, so we'll open it up for discussion. Frank Ziccarelli, Toronto Sun, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Chris. Hey, you know, uh, I'm the guy whose cousins, the Pimentel, went to high school with you. He, he, one of them married uh, the Roque kid, Marcel. No way. Yeah, Got they, you. They just had a little boy last week. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. So listen here, yeah, I, I want to ask you. So when you were when you were going to high school, what did the Argos mean to you, or did did you go to games? What, what can you just talk about if you had any kind of connection with 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 the Argos back then? I tell this to people all the time. Um, you know, my first love as far as sports is concerned has always been basketball. So I was a huge basketball guy. Um, football meant nothing to me and I didn't understand the rules the game at all so it wasn't until grade 10 that I was um, introduced to football um, and even then it was just you know hey you know you're playing running back so take this ball and go score touchdowns for us I hated it um, so watching games wasn't a big deal for me uh, whether it was on tv or going to games um, but I did have my first encounter with um, the Argos and I think it was um, if I'm not mistaken, either grade 11 um, or my uh, my uh, senior year. And um, I remember like it was yesterday, it was uh, Chuck Winters came to speak at our school um, for the Argos. And so I had started playing football at the time. So I started kind of thinking about it and watching a little bit more, um, as well as pinball, of course, came to our school. So um, you can imagine the impression he left on me um that uh, uh the time that he came to, to to speak at gate so that was my first encounter with um the argos really and then uh from there on you know my uh my my, my curiosity kind of kept bringing me to 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 kind of watch games and um yeah i was a big fan obviously you know toronto is the is the home team even when i went to university uh the argos were uh was the home team so it's amazing to be able to um uh, to, to don the double blue Hey, um, my follow-up is obviously the one year away from football. How, how do you feel your body, uh, your mind? Uh, yeah, just basically what's yeah, the basic question. How, how do you feel? How do you feel? Man, I, I, I feel great. <laughs> I feel rejuvenated, man, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, you know, taking the, the, the year off, to be honest for me, it's been uh, amazing. Uh, my, my, uh, our second daughter, my wife and I, um, she just turned, you know, two months uh, yesterday. So, you know, the ability to kind of be home, um, to spend some quality time with, you know, our oldest as well as my wife and to be able to, to help and, and um, you know, and, 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 you know, be around with my wife because I, I, that's what I do. I just help. She does a lot of the stuff. She's a superhero. Um, but um, just to be able to be home uh, and be able to spend some time with the family has been amazing. So I really look at it from a, a positive standpoint. And of course, you got the effect that it has on the body, you know, um, not getting any younger, but hey, a year like that away from a lot, so much contact, to be honest with you, only does good for, uh, for your body. Well, thanks for your time, Enoch. All the best. Thank you so much. Thanks, Frank. We'll go next to Dan Ralph, Canadian Press. Dan, you're on mute. Unmute yourself. <laughs> I love technology. Um, good morning, and, and thank you for this. Um, what went into your decision? I mean, you took your time in free agency. What were you sort of pondering over, and how many uh, different things did you consider before reaching this decision? Uh, lots of different things, uh, lots of options. Um, of course, Montreal was, uh, was one of them. 
Um, there's a, there's other teams as well that, you know, I had conversations with, um, you know, my priority to be honest with you was, um, was, was family was being mm -hmm. home. Um, and, uh, you know, contrary to popular belief, money doesn't, you know, uh, is not the, the, uh, the, uh, the thing that dictates every decision. Um, so to be honest with you, you know, family was huge for me, uh, to be able to be home. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, with my girls, uh, my wife, um, my parents nearby, I have family, across, you know, in the GTA, lots of friends. Um, I think that is, um, it, it's, it's, there's no price tag on that, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, beyond that, um, be able to, to, to play for, you know, a, a GM like pinball to me is, mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, it's comparable to nothing. So um, he's been a mentor of mine prior to him even signing on to uh, to taking this job, and uh, to be able to, like I said, um, you know, play for 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 him is is um, is an honor for me. Um, obviously, knowing what he's accomplished on the field and off the field, uh, like I said, it's um, it's hard to describe. Uh, so we had a lot of conversations prior to that, and uh, you know, he. Um, you know, showed some extreme interest in, in, in kind of wanting me to uh, come on board. And uh, like I said, he's been a mentor. And to me, for me to do that is um, it, it means a lot for me. What's it say? Uh, just to follow up, I mean, the Argos have been very, very busy in free agency in, in, in this offseason. You've got a lot of talent on this team, both on, on both sides of the ball. However, it's with players who are past 30. And there's always that that question mark what do you say when when people like me ask you about uh, athletes in their 30s and and sort of the risk reward that comes with that I mean I can't tell you about everybody else but I know that I feel great um to be honest uh, numbers speak for themselves um mm -hmm. I don't know how much defending I need to, to do yeah um you know so uh I haven't even looked at the full roster yet, but I do know that there's been some great acquisitions mm -hmm. specifically in front of me, which, you know, <laughs> would impact me the most and, uh, you know, make me look even better. I could be 40 playing with a D-line like with that, like the one that's in front of me and uh, I'd still be looking good and hopefully even get something like this again next year. Um, but uh, you know what? Um, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. And I had multiple conversations with, uh, with Penn about you know his excitement for the roster that they you know they've been putting together and uh like i said um i've still have conversations i had conversations with um you know coach glenn uh coach dan woody i'll be meeting with him again uh, uh uh probably shortly as well and uh everyone's excited um I, I can't wait to get into locker room and uh you know be able to put you know what um i know what we're capable of as far as a, as a union as a team together terrific thank you Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Let's go next to JC Abbott, Three Down Nation. Go ahead, JC. Hello, Enoch. Um, you've said before on record that you were hoping to be back in Montreal uh, and that, that that didn't occur. Can you take us through that situation and uh, how things went down between you and, and GM Danny Machuk? Machocha and how you came to the realization that you'd be playing elsewhere this year? Um, I don't want to get into too much detail, but, um, you know, I, it's not my first time being a free agent. And, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is just that um, there's a, a, a lot of usually like every, every time for, for real, to be honest with you, like it's been different for me as far as the priorities and as far as, you know, um, what I'm looking for when I enter free agency, um, whether either I was released from a team or, um, you know, uh, I was changing leagues or, you know, sim simply uh, hit free agency like last time. Uh, I usually have different criteria that I look at and, and, and um, depending on the stage of my life that I'm at. And so um, obviously it's the, the stage that I'm at with, you know, my family being the priority was a major thing. And, um, you know, for me to have, you know, to, to, to make the move to Montreal, I think that it, it would have taken a lot from, you know, Montreal side. And I just didn't feel like, you know, uh, uh, there it was enough done on that side to, to bring me back. But at the end of the day, like I said, to me, the beautiful thing is that I'm able to spend my time, um, more time with my family, um, be home 
come back and sleep in my own bed after practices, after games. And uh, that is uh, the major thing. You talk a lot about how important family was in this decision. Is it fair to say you took a bit of a home ca- hometown discount, if you will, to play with the Argos? Uh, you know, you can say that. I think that there's a lot of value in, um, in, in me being home. And uh, there's a lot of uh, different things that encompassate, you know, um, taking the, the offer that was given to me and the benefit as well as just being home and the ability to network and the ability to, um, you know, uh, do beyond just in the, the football field, I think is also, was also intriguing to me. So like I said, to be able to, uh, uh, to come home, um, be with uh, a play under a guy like uh, a general manager, like pinball and uh, to be home is, has been the, uh, the biggest thing. So it's not even about, uh, a price tag than it is it's it's the value that I get in uh, that I get you know not even the team but that I get from uh, you know being home that uh, matters most to me excellent thank you very much thank you thanks JC uh, David Morasuti fan side go ahead David uh, hi Minak. Uh thank you again for doing this um, I noticed that you, I mean obviously seeing your zoom name the Mwamba moments podcast You like to do a lot of things outside of football. How do you plan to really integrate that into your life here with the Argonauts now going forward? Uh, My podcast? Podcasting or even just other initiatives with the team. Oh, that's always been me. You know, um, that's always been me. I don't think that I'd be the the person that I am if I if I didn't do everything that I do off the field now. you know, uh, had multiple conversations. And again, like, you know, with, with Ben Ball, he was actually my first guest on the podcast way before, like I said, he even took the job um, as the, uh, as the, um, the general manager of the Argonauts. Um, but um, I think that it just helps me um, be even a better football player. The more that I can do off the field again, I think that I have a good gauge on, on, on the amount of things that I can take on uh, at the stage that I'm at in my career. So, um, you know, I know that um, obviously I have to focus. My, my priority has always been football, um, but to me, uh, growth is extremely important. And um, how I, I choose to grow is by also um, diving into different things. And at the end of the day, the, uh, the, the reality of the situation is that, you know, uh, as football players and professional athletes, um, our sport is never um, there for us um, forever. And so, um, you know, I've done a lot of different things over my career. Um, and like I said, it's helped me to develop, you know, off the field and as well as on the field, to be honest with you. And uh, at the end of the day, to be, uh, to be specific, I think that it helps me in, 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 in ways that allows me to be a, a better leader um, by diving into different things and experimenting different things in different uh, industries and, and, and stratospheres. So um, I think that I, it opens up my mind to different ways of interacting with people and in turn helps me to uh, become a better leader. And uh, I must say that um, on that topic, I feel like, you know, my last year playing football I had, was my best year as far as a leader. Forget the numbers, forget football, but as far as the leader, I think that I grew the most. And, and I have to say that it's been because of the different things that I've been able to, um, to touch on off the field. And just to follow up on that, I mean, uh, you know, the Argonauts, you know, being a, a part of a big company like MLSC and having the reach that it does, how do you hope to maybe exploit that in a way to help even maybe with the younger attract the younger crowds towards the game of football, maybe with the team and reaching out to that young crowd? Do you see that as something that you can help be a part of? Absolutely, man. Every team that I've always been a part of, you know, I, I immerse myself into the team, into the city. Um, so being from here um, and, and knowing kind of the challenges that, you know, the team has had, you know, over the years, I think that um, MLSC is an, a, a great corporation and, and a great organization to uh, kind of be under. So um, I'm excited to kind of for, for the things that, 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 that will come out of um you know, uh, different partnerships or different um, opportunities, to be honest with you. And like you mentioned, the ability to um, to embrace the challenge that is to bring, you know, um, the 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 younger crowd to games is something that, uh, that I'm excited about. And, um, you know, I, I'm already affiliated as well. As a matter of fact, a couple of days ago, uh, when the announcement was made public, I was at a, a high school. So um, you know, we, we, we officialized a, uh, 
a partnership, a community partnership with um, the Peel District School Board. And so I'm excited for that. And, and, and you know, even with that, hopefully there'll be some opportunities for the kids that, you know, um, I'll be able to, um, to be a part of the kids' lives I'll be able to be a part of. Hopefully, you know, it'll turn into some opportunities for them to come to games and, uh, um, you know, as well as the mentoring aspect of it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Um, we'll go next to Frank Stanichi, Candid Frank Live. Go ahead, Frank. Don't forget to unmute yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, I apologize. I didn't quite make it in time. So Enoch, if I am repeating a question, I apologize. But my question is, you had the experience in Montreal back a couple of years ago where they were loading up with a lot of talented players. What are you taking from that experience and bringing to the Toronto Argonauts who apparently are doing maybe even more than Montreal did when you went there, when the big buildup happened there and speak to the cap issues that a lot of fans and, and, and media are, are wondering how the Argos, like how generous were you in your contract to allow yourself to be a part of this team and have other players of your quality and maybe even better on this team to play with? Um, that's, that's a great question, Frank. I mean, I, I, I'm extremely passionate about the game of football. Um, and, uh, my experience in Montreal was an amazing one. And, and, and I live my life in such a way that, um, I try to grow in every single experience. And uh, I think that I grew so much specifically from a leadership standpoint, when it comes to being, uh, in Montreal and the, the different types of, of people that we had in the locker room. And I think it grew me as a person and as a, as a leader, the ability to communicate to different styles of people and to uh, understand kind of the different calibers of, of you know, even with talent and whatnot. And uh, uh, like you mentioned, you know, Montreal was definitely, you know, had brought a lot of different uh, uh, people and a lot of uh, talented individuals to uh, our defense and our offense as well. So um, I, I definitely see the similarities that you're mentioning. And, and I think, like I said, the, the leadership that um, kind of developed and that, that I added, you know, for my time in Montreal is definitely one of the major things that I'll be bringing. I think my, you know, my play speaks for itself and, uh, um, you know, I'm not worried about that at all. I think that um, I know, actually, it's not even I think, I know that the biggest thing is going to be about, um, you know, gelling, you know, the faster we can gel and be to and play together and understand one another is the better we'll be. I think we got the talent, you know, talent is not the question. And, we, you know, someone mentioned earlier, I can't remember, excuse, uh, pardon me, I can't remember exactly who it was who asked the question about, you know, players over the age of 30. This is a huge benefit to, to be able to assemble a team. I think that it'll uh, help us to, um, you know, uh, I think we're more mature and we understand, you know, the, 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 what the game kind of demands from teams, from greatness, um, and for success as a whole. And uh, I think that it'll kind of help us to take that step into um, unity a lot faster. If I may have follow up, uh, if, if one assumes that coming home is a wonderful feeling and a great feeling to be around the people you know, love, care about, and know, love, and care about you, speak to the pressure that that might um, you know, might put on you or, or how do you avoid allowing that pressure to be a negative and turn it into a positive? Uh, I've played long enough to not let pressure be an issue for me. I mean, uh, I'll take it back to my first year as, as a professional athlete, you know, I was drafted first overall, you know, and I never let the pressure at that time kind of, you know, take over. Um, but one of the main reasons, and it's been a lot of times, you know, I've, I've signed a huge deal and people were expecting so much from me and I've, I've, you know, I've been to different places where the, the, the expectations were huge, but, um, at the end of the day, the way I treat pressure is, um, I don't really feel it just because of the simple fact that I have so, so such high expectations for myself, um, that whoever's out there that, that thinks that they, they have a high expectation for me or for the team that I play on it never really uh, impacts me. So, um, but, but, but my perception and my ability to per uh, perceive uh, kind of the situation that way is what allows me to be able to focus on the things that matter the most. And the thing that matters the most is, is, is my team, um, specifically my defense. And, um, you know, uh, um, I'll do everything that I can in my power to, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, 
uh, rally the guys together, um, galvanize each other, and and be able to um, to to play as one as a unit to be able to um, to to really succeed. So pressure is really something that <laughs> doesn't really speak to me. Well, in, enjoy the experience of being in the cradle of family that you have here in a sport that speaks to family. Uh, we appreciate you coming to Toronto. I look forward to seeing you on the field and in the locker room, commenting on all the stuff that goes on during a season. We all hope that happens, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Frank. You're welcome, man. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate it. Uh, next, Austin Owens, CFL. Go ahead, Austin. Thanks, Chris. Enoch, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it, man. Um, I just wanted to touch on the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, the defensive additions have been huge for this team, but the Argos have uh, gone out and really bolstered up the offense as well. Um, and obviously, from your last year in Montreal, you got to see what a great offense does with VA in them and how it helps the defense. I mean, from a defender standpoint, how do you look at this offense? How do you evaluate them? And then also, who or what are you most excited to see out of this offensive unit with the Argos this season? I mean, I, I, I like what, what I've seen so far. And again, I have to go through the whole roster to um, kind of um, familiarize myself with everybody. But, um, you know, as far as I know, you know, I'm a big fan of Dane, you know, everything that he's done. Uh, you know, John White is a guy that I've always respected. Um, so I, I like the offensive line. And so I like what we have on paper so far. So uh, to be honest with you, um, at the end of the day, the, the, the biggest thing that matters is um, for me to, to allow or to help my defense play the best that it can so that we can allow, you know, as much time on the field for the offense as possible. And I think, like I said, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the, the, the people that I've seen already on offense, as well as um, uh, Coach Dinwiddie. Um, I heard a lot of good things about him. And um, one of the f fun fact, I don't even know why this it just came up. But I was thinking about this yesterday. I think somebody can ch uh, fact check me on this, but I think that he was the first person that uh, first quarterback I, I, I sacked. So I gotta look that up. I'm gonna be meeting up with him uh, uh, soon, but I'm gonna have to ask him. But I do remember when I was in Winnipeg, he was in Saskatchewan. Uh, uh, he might have been the first person I sacked. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, Enoch, I got some uh, info here for you from your first sack from the esteemed Mike Hogan, September 9, 2012, Drew Willie. Oh, it was Drew. Okay. <laughs> it was Drew. All right. I can't bring this up to him when I meet him. Thanks for fact checking that. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it, Hoagie. Uh, we'll go next to, we'll, we'll loop back around to Dan Ralph here, uh, Canadian Press. Enoch, you talked about how um, 2020 was a year for you to spend, catch up on family and spend time with family. Um, you and I have talked about this a lot, about also the losses you had to deal with. Did that sort of put a damper on your year too? I mean, you talk about the positives of being able to spend family, but you've also had some personal losses to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I think that, you know, we're not quite out of the woodwork yet, you know, as far as the pandemic is concerned, but um, I think it speaks to the resiliency of, you know, really the world. So, um, there's a lot that happened over the last year. And, um, you know, I, I don't think I'm the only one. And I don't think that, you know, to have lost anybody at all. So I don't think that it makes me special or, or different. But um, I think that one of the things that I like to, uh, when I share this, I don't even share it to kind of bring any attention or spotlight on me. But I really want to um, speak on that just from the standpoint of encouragement and giving hope to everybody else as well that has gone to something through something similar, whether it's a loss of somebody or um, a loss of a job or, um, you know, being laid off or, you know, there's a lot of things that happened over the last year specifically uh, directly related to the pandemic. Um, but the message that I like to bring out is a message of hope, like I said, of encouragement, because at the end of the day, you know, we went through a lot, my family and I, but um, you know, through persistence and re resiliency and just being able to stand there for one another, um, you, you kind of see the strength that you truly possess within you. And you see um, the people that are around you that, that, that really love and care for you. And so um, if there's any message about, you know, team, we always talk about how football is a team sport, is the ultimate team sport. Um, you know, 
I was able to see my true team and, and the people that are around me that kind of supported me and encouraged me even when I felt like, you know, it was, it was difficult for me. So um, it's, it's important for everybody to also understand that when, even when you go through the darkest times in your life, you know, um, there's still um, a lot of a strength that you possess within you to be able to overcome it. Last two, if I may, um, how is it having your brother represent you? Is that a good or a bad thing? Because I know when you have an agent, you have you can have a potential adversarial relationship, but when you add the the, the family component to it, how how does that dynamic work? So he he's not he's not fully officially representing me just yet, but yeah. um, he's uh, finishing the process of um, being registered with the CFL. Um, but he's been a he's been a. a, a you know, a player in this league for a long time. And he's been a mentor. He's probably been my first mentor that I've ever had. So he's always been a step ahead of me as far as um, things that I needed to look for, you know, to kind of expect going forward. And so having, you know, gone through the loss of, my, um, you know, our late agent, um, you know, we definitely had a bunch of conversations. And when he said, you know, hey, look, I wouldn't mind doing that. He started the process and, and he's still, he's about to finish it. And yeah. he's definitely going to represent me. Um, but I don't think there's any rivalry at all. I think it's more of definitely, like I said, a support and, and it's someone that I trust and, I, and yeah. that I love. I've only had one agent, which, you know, sometimes can be rare. A lot of times, you know, I meet a lot of uh, my teammates who have gone, who are on their, on their third agent. And so I, I think that it's something special for me to, been, to have been with, um, you know, Jonathan Hardaway and, uh, uh, you know, for me to, uh, to, to, to have my brother uh, kind of, um, in the near future here represent me. Um, it, it's awesome. And I know, obviously, you know, he's been around for, for a long time. He has a lot of connections. He knows a yeah. lot of the coaches that, you know, uh, throughout the league. So it's something that is, um, that's, uh, that, that's special to, to me, for me, again, I'm, I'm huge on family. So for me to be able to have him, um, you know, by my side, even as I continue my career, um, to have, you know, the, the, the words of wisdom from him, um, you know, whether it's game day or, or week to week and just as far as like you know career decisions is it's um it's amazing whether he's my agent or not he's always going to be doing that so for him to um to 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 potentially or to to become my agent here in the near future is something special for me uh, for me and so I'm looking forward to to even like his growth even in the um in this uh new field for him so um, I'm excited to see kind of the, uh, the the guys that he'll be bringing on and he'll be representing even after me. So uh, it's exciting for, for, for me to kind of be able to be there for him as well as he's able to be be there for me. Terrific. Thank you again. Thanks, Dan. We'll just do two more. Uh, if I can ask, please, that you just only ask one question and... Uh... Sorry. Oh, you're okay, Dan. Uh, no, that wasn't meant for you. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> Going forward, just one more question. You're good. Uh, JC Abbott, Three Down Nation. Uh, Enoch, you've you've pointed to that shiny award behind you a couple times so far in this interview. And the guy you beat out for that award um, last season uh, is going to be your teammate. He's going to be playing right beside you in, in Cam Judge. How excited are you to team up with another talented Canadian linebacker and what do you think the potential of that unit is? Man, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited. I spoke with uh, Coach Ivan um, a couple of days ago, uh, and, uh, you know, he sounded like he's super excited as well. So um, I can't wait to get into the room. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure, you know, Mr. Hogan is going to uh, let everybody know that Cam Judge is actually, uh, he's been a friend of mine, and he's been uh, a teammate of mine already. Ready. So we were teammates in Saskatchewan. He was actually a, 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 my rookie. Uh, he was a rookie with me in, in Saskatchewan. And I remember how much of a student of the game he was. And, you know, I'd come in early and try to kind of talk to a lot of the younger guys. And he was always there asking questions and everything. And so for me, even when, you know, we uh, we kind of parted ways and I went to uh, to Montreal, you know, to see him succeed is it, it was it was really gratifying for me and it was satisfying for me as well. So. Um, like I said, I think to me, even the game of football, it, it, it's beyond just the game of football when I play um, to see others grow the way that I saw Cam grow 
was um it is amazing and so I'm excited to kind of be back with him you know um he was very deserving of you know the shiny award that's behind me um even last year he had done enough and he had done a lot and so I wouldn't have been mad to uh if he had gotten it and so I'm excited to be able to play with him to have seen the development that he's experienced that he's 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 had over the last few years um you know the sky's the limit for the linebacking core and like I said um, you know, um, spoiler alert, we're going to look good, uh, myself and Cam and, and anybody that lines up behind the type of line that, that's in front of us. So, you know, I'm just excited for that, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited. Excellent. Thank you, Enoch. Thank you. Thank you, JC. Uh, Frank Stanici, did you have one more question for us? Uh, Enoch, um, you talk about your your brother and you talk about the situation, the world that's been in. Um, there are so many things that come through a footballer's mind, I guess, at this time. In your mind, explain to us how how you wrap your head around life today in general. Um, we talked about being with family, but with all that's going on around us, uh, how do you how do you see yourself focusing on the important task, which is those those minutes when the clock is running during the game? It's part of being a professional athlete, Frank. Um, you know, we, we talk about something that's common to the world right now as a pandemic, but the reality is, you know, all of us football players, you know, professional athletes as a whole, we, um, we, we, we always have other things that's going on in our lives and the ability, you know, what separates, I think, us, um, you know, the pros from the amateurs is, is, is that, that level of focus. We have the, le the, the laser-like focus um, to be able to, um, to perform when when the lights come on to perform when you know in between the white lines and in between you know the uh, uh the beginning and the end of each game so um i think that the pandemic is a huge thing but i think that just uh just because it's common to everyone it doesn't it doesn't um, mean that it's uh, the first time that we're dealing with things outside of the football field like i said um you know i went through a lot this past year experienced you know a few losses um but I'm not the first, you know, professional athlete to play um, after somebody has passed and to play, you know, after someone, you know, a wife gave birth. So I, I've seen it before. And, um, you know, I think that it's something to be said about um, teamwork. It's something to be said about having a, a one goal and um, focusing on that same goal and having the people around you to support you and encourage you. I talked about how football is the, the ultimate team sport. Um, you know, that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in football that you see, you know, directly um, being applied as well off the field whenever you, you, you encounter difficult circumstances, specifically uh, something like the pandemic.